We have Buccaneers at Saints, and with Marshawn Lattimore being healthy, this is essentially the seventh Rocky movie, as Marshawn <laughs> Lattimore and Mike Evans will be on the field at the same time, which is always most watch TV or must watch TV. Uh, other than that matchup, Carmen, what do you have as the matchup that matters here? Yeah, that was I wanted to say Marshawn Lattimore and Mike Evans, <laughs> but uh, it's like they're just. It's just the best when teams and players in particular have an actual rivalry. Like these guys yeah. actually don't like each other. And that is so rare in the, in today's NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, I mean, and it, it makes sense with the amount of movement that these guys have between teams. It doesn't really make sense to actually right. hate anybody. Y'all, you're right. all in the NFL brotherhood, but that is not the case with Marshall Lattimore and Mike Evans. Mike really hates Marshall. And it's, <laughs> it's it is it is it is you know again i i think a lot of people agree with you you know did it take it a little too far per the nfl's rules and sportsmanship all right maybe a little bit but the juice is what we love right like that is that added mentality of just like i don't like this dude and sometimes like it's gonna go a little bit after the whistle a little bit before the whistle and um yeah that, that's the understood that's the understood matchup that matters is who might throw the first haymaker or who might not <laughs> right to get a 15 yard penalty here and there so we'll see if we have anything there i'm curious as to how much marshawn lines up with mike evans because uh this the secondary for the new Orleans states this isn't my match of the matters you're just kind of going off the top of my head here um but i i think that you know just all of these dbs i'll get into it a little bit more but what's your matchup that matters here my actual matchup that matters is the bucks defensive line against the saints o-line considering that the bucks defensive line is getting more healthy you have kalaja cancy back at practice um, and you have on the other side, you have the Saints really lacking in health as far as their offensive line goes. They don't have Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz and Lucas Patrick both dealing with injuries. What's really interesting to me is so Eric McCoy, this will be their second game without him, but they had the fourth highest EPA per play in pass blocking weeks one through three with Eric McCoy. After Eric McCoy went down, they dropped to the Saints dropped to 20th in EPA per play pass blocking wise. So you see that they're in, the interior O-line is just really, really struggling here. 29.0 blocking grade in week five, which ranked dead last. Uh, 24.0 pass blocking grade, also dead last. And they were first in pressures allowed. So this is all something that the Bucks can take advantage of, given the fact that they are now healthy and they have a couple of monsters on the interior of their defensive line, not only in Kalaja Kansi, but Vita Vea. We've seen Logan Hall even come on a lot in on the, for that interior and getting pressure, being a little bit of a menace on, on that. So it's helping out the guys on the outside for this Bucks defense. And that front in general is just really hard to contend with. And that is going, the, the task is going to be up to the Saints interior offensive line, which is struggling so badly uh, through the through the in the last couple of weeks of the season where Eric McCoy has gone down. Yeah, I mean, Cancy's the plus factor for me, right? I mean, yeah. the fact that he is back and what he could be as a as a pass rusher for this team is huge because just in week five, now I understand like Chase. Chiefs have a good defensive line. Steve Spagnuolo is a great defense coordinator when it comes to dialing up pressure and making life hell for offensive linemen. And, you know, they've got a guy named Chris Jones who's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I understand all that. But even with that being the case, the interior offensive line, whatever combination of guards and centers that they had out there in week five against the Chiefs, Saints interior three, 29.0 blocking grade as a team last in the NFL that week. 24.0 pass blocking grade last in the NFL that week. And 13 pressures allowed First in the NFL that week, and meaning first, meaning once again, last. So with Kalijah Kansi coming back, Vita Bay obviously in the middle, that's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for the New Orleans Saints who are now starting Spencer Rattler as well. Um, that's, that's you know, Rattler's kind of a plus factor in his own right, just because right. how he can deal with that interior pressure is going to mean a lot. Because as they say, the shortest uh, distance between two points is a straight line. And if you are a defensive tackle and you could just run straight at the football, you're going to get there first. And especially if you win clean, like cancy has been able to do um, when he has been healthy at the NFL level. So to me, that's a big time plus factor. Yeah. My matchup that matters. It, it, it wasn't necessarily Mike Evans versus Marshawn Lattimore, but it is the bigger picture of the Buccaneers wide receivers versus the Saints defense back because it's not always a strength on strength with this group, even for as long as Chris Godwin and Mike Evans have been a duo, even for as long as, you know, guys like Tyron Matthew and Marshawn Lattimore have been in this defense secondary coverage defense overall it's very up and down but going into this game the secondary group of the new orleans saints is a big time strength of their team 
And what we have seen from the Bucks' passing attack, so are their wide receivers as well. When you look at Chris Godwin, he is he has the third highest PFF receiving grade at an 86.9. He's got 25 catches, gaining a first down. That's second in the NFL. He's got nine catches of 15 yards or more. Mike Evans, he's tied for for first in uh, in. Uh, receiving touchdowns with Jamar Chase with five. He's got four red zone TDs, which is first. And so it's just, it's all working perfectly for how the Bucks want to use their wide receivers. And it's also working perfectly, it feels like, with how the Saints want to be with their aggressive defensive backs, but particularly their corners. So not only do these guys not like each other, they're both really good right now. They're both full confidence. It's not like, ah, we're reeling one way or the other. They're both, both of these groups are going into this game thinking, we're going to be the reason why our teams win. And I think that's what's going to make for a very, very fun matchup that matters with strength on strength there. But who's your plus factor in this one before we move on? Well, speaking of guys that are returning for the Buccaneers, could be Antoine Winfield Jr. who is he returned to practice this week. He's practicing a limited capacity. But if I know anything about Antoine, tweeze. Uh, he is going to try to get into this game come hell or high water. Um, the Bucks have everything to play for, too, with everything going on back home. Their families and their dogs, their pets. Everybody was evacuated to New Orleans. The, the team set up hotel rooms in Orlando for people that were staying behind. Um, this has been just kind of a really tumultuous week for the Bucks, And they know how to harness it. And that, that's not just Antoine, but that's, that's the whole team. Uh, I do think that that's going to provide just a ton of juice, though, for this Buccaneers defense, which they've allowed 6.4 yards per play when they're using in their base personnel, which is four defensive backs. And in order to kind of combat that, you're going to need one of those four defensive backs to be Antoine Winfield Jr. Um, that, that's the second most among the 29 defenses to use base personnel on at least 10% of their plays, which the Bucks do stay in their base quite a bit. So that's, a, it, it, you know, just kind of an opportunity here for Antoine to really make a difference. And it's why he would make such a difference if he returns back to this lineup, because when he is healthy, when he is back, he is one of the best, if not the best safeties in this league. And he's going to have all of the juice in the world coming back. And it's just going, I think it's just going to do wonders for this defense. Yeah. And and the rookie quarterback factor as well. Like I, I'm excited to see Spencer Rattler. I really am. But, you know, if Antoine Winfield Jr. is back there, it makes it all the more difficult. You'll second guess things. You'll be a little bit more hesitant. Can I throw the ball deep down the field? Now, they got good ones, right? Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid. Those are great guys to rely on and give them a chance deep down the field. But uh, there's a difference when Winfield Jr. is back there and when he is not. So I think that's an excellent call up by you. I think Kansi's getting a lot of the, the publicity of him coming back. But if Winfield Jr. can come back as well. 